Hello everyone, this is Thomas with Geon Technologies. For this video, we'll introduce you to Yocto and Open Embedded and our efforts with the Meta Red Hawk SDR layer. By the end of this video, we'll kick the tires on an emulated ARM build of Red Hawk using QEMU and actually start the domain. So first, what is it? Well, the gist is that the Yocto project and Open Embedded both use Bitbake to layer various support recipes together to generate a Linux file system, kernel, etc all things necessary for booting the associated target called a machine. This is not unlike the Angstrom project and others using Bitbake. The difference is that Yocto and Open Embedded have worked together to standardize somewhat the recipe structures so that the layers can be used together between the two projects. Starting in 2014, Gion began developing its own Open Embedded capabilities, targeting a number of zinc-based boards as a means for building out our Meta Red Hawk SDR layer. And in 2016, we used Edis Research's E310 Open Embedded build environment as a means to fork and blend Axios's own Open Embedded Hawk with ours into what ultimately became our new Meta Red Hawk SDR layer. Since then, we've used our layer against a number of ARM targets based on Avnet boards, like the MicroZ, a tiny speak not its name Zinc 7010, the Edis Research E310, of course, and an Ivea Atlas 1Z7E, which is also a Zinc based system. We've also received a considerable amount of feedback, internally and externally, that getting started with it is really rough. It seems to be the state of affairs with many Yocto open embedded builds, with the E310 being a sparkling exception to that rule. Because of that, the last couple of weeks we've adopted the example shown by Edis Research and others and released Meta Red Hawk SDR manifests. And this time, we're using Yocto Project as our baseline. This repository makes use of Google's repo utility to snapshot a build environment, potentially for various targets. We've also incorporated example template configuration files so that this whole process goes a bit more smoothly. I'm reluctant to call it easy because anybody with experience in this area will tell you that any usage of easy is not Webster's definition. The process for setting up your environment really begins with getting into an operating system that can support Bitbake. Our current release works with Krogoth, so you should be fine following the Yocto 2.1 guide for installing dependencies to support Bitbake. I've used CentOS 7, various flavors of Mint, and Ubuntu 12, 14, and 16. Basically, not CentOS 6. I've heard rumors that it's possible to get going natively on CentOS 6.8, but in my experience, it was easiest to wrap it in a Docker image and then mount the build directory on the volume of the host OS, just for space. And consequently, that's a great way to set up your continuous integration, as we did for some of our targets recently. Once you have the dependencies installed, to get actually started, we'll make a directory where you'll do the build. I would recommend having at least 8 gigabytes of RAM and a minimum of 20 gigabytes of hard disk space available. While your target may only be 100 megabytes in size, all those build artifacts that get generated consume a huge amount of space. From there, the gist is run repo init against a manifest file which is written in XML. That details the set of source code repositories that should be collected for the build. When you run repo sync, it downloads all of those references and places them in locations specified in the manifest. Those familiar with Git can think of this like a Git clone recursive that fetches submodules collected in a top-level repository. In this case, we have it pointed to our manifest for the default Red Hawk build, which includes our layer, the meta open embedded layer, and Yocto's Pocky, which is a series of meta layers including things like the Linux kernel recipe and some emulator board support packages. We'll take a breath there to talk about what we just did. These layers contain classes for permitting inheritance between recipes, recipes detailing how to build some dependency, package groups for collecting those recipes together under some other meaningful name, and images for collecting recipes and package groups into a root file system definition. The recipes also describe board support package or BSP elements like U-Boot and the device tree for the specific target hardware. The recipes are not actual source code, rather each is source code for Bitbake on how to handle the actual source code. That exchange comes in a moment when we run Bitbake, which will stitch together the package's recipes inferred by the environmental setup, which individually We'll specify what to fetch, patch, compile, install, deploy, and package what the recipe was intended to originally make. So back to the build. Next, initially we'll use the environment variable template conf and open embedded's environment setup script to configure the build directory, where all generated build artifacts will reside. 
In this one step, you're also getting several environment variables to call out BitBake and some top-level variables for the build. If you were to return to this build sometime later without those variables, you'd only need to run this script with the trailing arguments for build and pocky slash bitbake from your main project directory. You'll notice that the script dropped this into the build directory. Here you'll find a conf folder containing a bblayers file and local configuration file. These were synthesized from the sample versions provided at the template conf location. So let's take a look at bblayers. This file lays out one set of priorities. Towards the top tends to be more base and board support package oriented. And towards the bottom are more application or root file system specific layers, if you will. Each layer definition also generally has a conf folder with a layer configuration file that might also specify a prioritization that can help nudge things along if necessary. But for the most part I stick to this base layers up top and my layers at the bottom sort of setup. Now let's look at local conf. This file has several other variables for configuring the environment variables, including specifying additional recipes to throw into the bitbag, regardless of what the image specified, as well as what type of packages to generate. There is also a flag in here for removing work files after they're built. We generally have this set to save space during the build. What it means is that once the build of a recipe is finished, which is to say it's deployed into the target file system and packaged already, the work folder of that recipe is cleared out usually leaving just about the log files behind. We can specify explicitly the machine or the system target in the local comp file, but it's generally weak set in this file and it's best just to leave it in your shell environment. So export machine set to QEMU arm, all lowercase. This corresponds to a name in the Pocky layers meta conf machine directory and ultimately calls out the type of processor to configure for the kernel and other things. Now, unit test your CPU fans by typing bitbake redhawk hyphen base hyphen image. The resulting build will come pre-configured with OmniOrb and OmniEvents set to start automatically and is capable of running Node Booter. By the power of television and a head nod to attention spans everywhere, we'll fast forward through the next two to three hours of this build. Now that we're finished, we can type run QEMU QEMU arm. This will boot the target in the emulator. Note the IP address. Open a terminal and SSH to log in to your target. It may take a few seconds for the emulated ARM target to boot, so if your request is rejected, keep trying. You'll eventually see a Linux prompt. Type node booter dash capital D to start the domain. If you have Redhawk installed on your host system, you could configure OmniOrb config to point at this emulated domain's IP, stop your own Omni services, then kick a device manager you'd be able to join this domain. But let's face it, an emulator running a domain is probably not why you went to all this trouble. More likely your goal is to target an embedded platform where you'll install your special hardware drivers and your Red Hawk device and perhaps more. But till next time. In part two, we'll target a Navnet product, the MicroZ. While it's Webster's definition of easy for sure to update the environment, it's a Git clone followed by updating a line in BB layers. The post bake contains a gotcha thanks to a mismatch of documentation, which we'll show you how to fix. So thank you for watching this video on using Gion's Meta Redhawk SDR default manifest to stand up an emulated ARM target with Redhawk pre-installed using Yocto and Open Embedded. Again, my name is Thomas with Gion Technologies. Please don't hesitate to reach out for in-class training and support.